Hello, Graham. Yes, how are you? Sorry I missed you just then. Oh, no worries. How are you today? It's great. A little, I'm in Michigan. It's a little cold here. <laughs> uh, a little bit, yeah. We're just up in that, uh, that area right before New Year's, so I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of strange, but uh, it's, it's, I know it's a lot, very cold out on the East Coast, Northeast. Yes. Well, anyways, my name's Bill Hernandez. I'm the editor at rockbandreviews.com. It's probably been a good four years since we've last uh, spoken with each other, so uh, it'll, yeah. it feels good to catch up. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I keep it's in nice touch. To be speaking again. Yeah, I keep in touch with uh, with your guitarist Aaron through Facebook uh, quite a bit. So it'll be great to see oh, you guys. Oh, great! Yeah, it'll be great to see you guys uh, when you're down here um, next month in warm yeah. Miami. Yeah, I think it'll be a lot even warmer than it is here. I'm sure it will be. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it will. Now, uh, looking back to when you were a very young boy, can, can you recall the first time that that you heard music and the impact that it had on you? Well, I was I was very young because, you know, my my parents and my sisters used to listen to the BBC all the time in England. Mm -hmm. And I used to listen to Frank Sinatra and Bobby V, all those, uh, you know, acts of the 50s. So I was, I think I was probably about seven or eight years old when I first started to notice everything, you know. Now, aside from, from the Beatles and, and, uh, and, you know, the Stones, things like that, like early in your career, who were some of the bands that inspired you both as a musician and a songwriter? Well, for me, it, it was Lennon McCartney from the very beginning. Yeah. You know, I was lucky enough to have grown up in that era. Uh, you know, I, uh, I used to rush home from school and listen to the Beatles on the BBC. They had a show called... I know it was Tuesday afternoon, it was on at 5 o'clock, and it was called Pop Go the Beatles, and mm -hmm. it was 1963, and I used to just be glued to the radio for that half an hour every week, and then I got into them very deeply, but there, there weren't that many other bands around at that point, you know. Yeah. Now, so, now as a songwriter, do you draw from personal experience, or do you, do you and, and do you have a formula or a structured way when you write a song? Um, I, I think I do. Uh, um, you know, when, when I need to write a song for someone or for a particular thing, uh, uh, I start thinking about the parameters of the song that I want to write. But I don't think about the actual song until I sit down and, and, and compose it. And I think about the parameters, uh, the story that I need to tell. And once I've got that in my mind, then I'll sit down, and usually it all unfolds very quickly. But it's the thought process that goes into it that uh, takes the time. I need to know, what well, the story is very important for me, you know. Uh, but in my early years as a songwriter, I didn't used to pay any attention to that. Mm -hmm. I just used to write the song, and it would be random what it was about. But now I pay more attention to the details before the song actually unfolds, if that makes any sense. Now, I, I play guitar as well, and I find that the hardest thing for me is while I can write lyrics and I can write instrumentals, I have a hard time putting the two together. Is it difficult for you personally to write a song? No, it's not. It's, it's actually the opposite. It's very easy for me to write a song. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think because I've been doing it for such a long time, you know, I'm, I started writing songs when I was 10, and I didn't even know I was writing songs. So I've been doing it a long time. Uh, but for me, it's, it's second nature because that's that's really what I do, you know. And uh, I mean, I, I'm a, I always tell people I'm, I'm not a, a guitarist or a pianist or a singer. I'm a songwriter that plays piano, guitar, and sings. So that's really my prime function. So that's what I put all my energies into. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, I, I love it so much that it's, it's not a chore for me, and I never really think too much about it. Once, once, once again, once I have the story that I need to tell, then the song comes out really fast, but I have to get the story right, you know. Now, you mentioned as a guitar pay player and a pianist, as, as a musician, mm. are you self-taught? I am, yes. I've been, playing, I've been playing both piano and guitar for, oh, since I was... I started playing guitar when I was... Uh, I think ten and a half when I was eleven, um, and piano I started to play 
uh, when I was about 15, but I'm not proficient in either. You know, I'm, I, I use both instruments as a tool to write songs. Yeah. It, it was never my, it was never my, uh, my lot to be a really proficient pianist or guitarist. However, I, I wish that I was, but I'm just not, you know. I don't put, I don't put enough energy into it either to be really excellent at, at that. But that's not what I was meant to be. I like to put my energy into writing songs because I just love it so much. You know? Well, as someone who's covered over a dozen of your shows over the years, I, I, I think you put it over pretty well. Oh, thank you. I, I, I get away with a lot, you know. I mean, I'm a rhythm guitarist. They can get away with a lot, but I, I don't play any lead guitar and I wouldn't even go out. It's just not my thing. But, uh, you know, once again, I think it's very important for for a person to know their strengths and to do what they're really good at. You know, like you mentioned, you keep in touch with Aaron. Yeah. Um, I mean, if I was an up-and-coming guitar player, I would look at what how Aaron plays and I would go, oh, wow, there's no way I can be that good. So I would do something else. I would go in another direction. Yeah, but with someone, with someone like Aaron, for instance, who, who is our guitarist, he's just amazing. And so he fills that role yeah. And then each member of the band fills another role, and together we create this nucleus of something that's impenetrable, you know. Yeah, he is certainly uh, a, a valuable addition to uh, to Air Supply, I must say. Oh yeah, he's he's just phenomenal. Yeah. Now, now your voice is also your instrument. What do you do, if anything, to maintain your vocals while you're on tour? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, once again, now after all these years, I I pay a lot of attention to to health, and you know we do so many we do 130 shows a year, so you've got to stay in shape. Plus, th there's nothing worse for a performer getting on stage when you've got a sore throat and you can't sing as well as you normally can. Yeah. So I but I pay a lot of attention to to trying to keep my voice in good shape. You know, I I do yoga. I, I work out every day and I try to stay in good physical condition because I've learned that that helps everything. If you feel good, you're going to sing good. You know? It's very rare when I get a, a cold or a sore throat. Mm -hmm. Very rare. Now, you but it's air... important. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, you just, you just yeah. mentioned that Air Supply does over 130 shows a year, which also include international dates. Now, although yeah. you're a seasoned veteran of the road, does it ever get to be too much at times, the, you know, the traveling? You know, the travel gets more difficult every year, I must say. Mm -hmm. uh oh, yeah, it is, because, you know, more people travel, and uh, the planes get smaller. Uh -huh. <laughs> but, you know, you have to deal with it, and it's, it's part of the... It's part of the curriculum of doing what we do. You know, it's funny, because as... as touring musicians, not just us, but all of them, you know, you spend two hours on stage every night, but the other 22 hours, you're either traveling or sitting down somewhere or waiting. You know, we, we wait around a lot. We wait for airplanes and we sit in cars and we do a lot of that, but it, it's still all worth it to, to get on stage at night and, and, and just be as good as you can be, you know. It's part of the, it's, it's part of the job, really, but it does get difficult. I mean, for a lot of people, you guys have a dream job. I mean, you're you're traveling, you're meeting people, you're performing for your fans, and you're doing what you love. Yeah, I mean, we do have a dream job, and I often check myself pretty much a few times a day. I sit and I think, God, I have such a great job. Mm. And people think it's people think it's glamorous, and you doing this, that, and the other. It's not really glamorous. It's it's uh, it's hard work. And the older you get, the harder it gets. But the rewards are great. You know, you're doing what you love, and you're bringing great joy to a lot of people around the world. And, it, you know, it doesn't get any better than that. Mm. Now, Air Supply has been putting out hit after hit for over 40 years now. I mean, to what yeah. do you owe the band's success? And did you think that you and Russell would still be here doing this now when you first got together? What, no, no way. I mean, when we got together, we knew that it was pretty special. We sounded great together, and, and we, we got on so well. Him being the singer and me being the songwriter, but I don't think anyone could imagine being together this long. It's certainly not 43 years. Uh, finally, um, yeah. Now, now 
Now, finally, what is next for you and Air Supply? Anything new coming up? Yeah, we're actually uh, in the middle of working on a, a musical with all the Air Supply catalog. In fact, I'm working on it as we speak. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of international tours coming up. We have a new album coming out, an orchestral album coming out in February. So we've got a lot of stuff going on. It's all not the same stuff, but it's all related, musical related stuff that we're we're digging our heels and we're gonna be around for a long time yet. Very good, very good. Your fans are gonna be great uh, glad to hear that. I wanna thank you again, Graham, for taking the time to speak with us today and we're looking forward to oh, seeing you. Oh, you're very you. welcome. And we're looking forward to seeing you uh, at the Magic City Casino next month here in Miami. Yeah. Great. Yeah, we always look forward to that show. We've been doing it for several years now and it's so great to be there, but I look forward to seeing you too. Wonderful. Is uh, is Sparky still with you guys? Oh yeah, yeah. He's in his twenty sixth year now. Wow, he's he's fantastic. I mean, a lot of people don't know uh, about Sparky and what he does behind the scenes for you guys. I mean, he's he's definitely fifty percent, I think, of uh, of your show and how and how it, how it comes off. Yeah, he's he's just the best and. You know, he'll be with us for a long time, yeah. In his 26th year, that's quite an achievement for, for a tour manager. But he started off just being a guitar tech, and he just climbed the ladder with us, and he's just the best. That's fantastic. Well, if we can come back and say hi, because it's been a while, that would be great. And um, yeah. And if we, uh, yeah. we would love to do a guitar giveaway on our website. If I bring a guitar, would you guys sign it so we could give it away to a fan? Oh, absolutely, yeah. That would be great. Just get, just get all the sparky when we get there. Wonderful. All right. I look forward to seeing you and the boys. Safe travels and God bless you. And stay warm. Great. And thank you, sir. It's great to speak with you again. Okay, Graham. Bye-bye, sir. Bye-bye.